Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So I'm here with another podcast. So everybody's been asking me to speak on the whole Brian McKnight situation. So if you guys do not know, Brian McKnight got married to a woman named Leilani McKnight, um, who's of Asian descent. And he got married to her back in 2017. And he talks all the time about his wife and his son. His son, who's not his biological son, his name is Jack, and that's Leilani's child. But Brian claims him as his own because they're married now. So the other day, Brian McKnight had posted a picture of his son, Jack, and he says, here's my son, Jack, with his new challenger. I'm so proud of my boy. No one deserves this more than you. No one asked you to, and you got a job at McDonald's to help pay for it, and we didn't even ask you to do that either. You took your hard-earned money and said, here, I want to help you pay for it. BKM and I cried because I know that you don't take things for granted. You love and respect me as your father, not just because I'm married to your mother, and I love you as my son, period. Enjoy, but take it easy. It's a V8. Hashtag Brianize. Hashtag Proud Dad. Hashtag I Love Our Life. Hashtag All American Muscle. So that is the post that Brian McKnight posted celebrating his stepson or son's um, independence. You know, he helped him buy the car and he's really proud of him. So soon after that, I mean, nobody, nobody at all. All of a sudden, Brian McKnight's biological children, they seen that post and they went the hell off, bitch, okay? They took to social media and got to spilling all the damn tea. And I was here slipping slow. So this is what his biological son and daughter had to say about Brian McKnight. So his biological son, Brian McKnight Jr. says, I can't imagine abandoning my children, man. It's hard not to imagine the psyche of a man who can truly turn his back on his actual sons, on his actual blood and creations. It's mind boggling to me. I don't think there's any situation that merits the way my father has chosen to treat my brother, my sister, his grandchildren, one of which being his firstborn son's firstborn son who also bears our name. It's insane to me to have absolutely no empathy for the type of life to be introduced to us, only to become to resent us for that life catching up with us. It breaks my heart, but not for myself, specifically for my siblings and my children. They don't deserve this at all, not open bit. I think he meant not one bit. Then he goes on to say, and I'm not letting shit slide, not for one second. I've tried my best to take the high road and be the bigger man and all that positive shit, but there's a much bigger issue here when it comes to black fathers, especially in entertainment that needs to be addressed. I believe there's a serious discussion that needs to be had. And a part of me truly feels that our story is one to begin the conversation that will lead to healing a lot of young men and women with abandonment issues. It's time to tell our side of the story. Hashtag son of a legend. So that is what Brian McKnight Jr. wrote. And then his daughter... She took to her page and she wrote this. She says, Daddy's little girl was never really a thing for me. Nobody understands what I've been through except my siblings. Believe it or not, I'm not always the person I seem to be. I'm not always happy. Most of the time, I'm battling my own demons, just like everyone else. I grew up thinking that things happened to me and my dad's relationship was my fault. I grew up thinking that he doesn't want to come visit me because he doesn't love me. Constantly put behind other kids that he would call his own while I'm cast to a land far, far away in the back of his mind. It sucks knowing that someone else who's not even blood related to you comes before you in every single way. It sucks knowing that my phone calls have to go through a stranger I barely know, that my text messages are read without a response, and that my stepmother tells me that they wish the best for me. It kills me to know that it's hard for me and my siblings to get a word in, not one word. At a very young age, I was always second place in my father's heart, maybe even third, fourth, fifth, depending on the situation. My father hasn't called to wish me happy birthday in years yet I sit by the phone every single year hoping that one day his heart will change I'm so fortunate that I have my two brothers who are father figures to me who celebrate me and love me every single day and that we make up the time we lost the anger the sadness that I hold in my heart every day over this is sickening it hurts knowing that my brothers went through this at my age and they're still going through it and my little sister's going through this at her young age. 
I don't usually write things like this, but I feel like enough is enough. And like BJ, I want to share my side of the story. I hope that there's someone out there that has gone or is going through the same thing. Some teenage girl who deals with this shit constantly who can relate to me and tell her side of the story and know that she's not alone. So that came from um, Brie McKnight, who is Brian McKnight's daughter. So once this went viral, honey, when I tell you the social media mob went crazy all up on that ass, they were dragging Brian McKnight up and down Instagram, throughout Twitter, uh, down the street on Facebook. He was getting his ass beat, honey. They drug him. He was all types of dead beats. Black fathers ain't shit. I mean, they drug him for the filth. And it got so bad to the point where Brian McKnight felt like, you know what, this is ridiculous. I'm about to speak on this. When I tell you, oh, old ass Brian McKnight because I ain't seen him in a while honey he took to Instagram live and he went in he spilled all the tea he was tired of the BS he's like you know I've never been attacked like this this is ridiculous and he basically stated his side of the story so I'm gonna go ahead and play that for you guys now y'all go ahead and check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary hey guys it's Brian McKnight here uh, I've been traveling about 17 hours to Guam I have a concert tonight and I got off the plane to some of the most heinous craziness I've ever seen in my life that my oldest son, Brian, would post that I'm abandoning my children. And the reason why, I suppose, is because I have a new family. And I guess this stems from a post that I made the other day about my son, Jack, who I'm very proud of, which isn't to say I'm not and haven't been proud of my other children, but I was proud of this one for the things that he did that day. But we'll get back to it in a second. Anyone who knows me knows over the last 20 years, 30 years now, as a matter of fact, that I've been there for my children every step of the way until recently. And let's be clear, my two sons are 30 and 27, not 12, not 13, but 30. And when my daughter's about to turn 18, that's another story I'll get to in a second. Uh, I've never missed a day of child support. I've never done anything adverse to my children whatsoever. I've always been there. I've always been there with advice, whether they took it or not. I've always been the sounding board, and I've always been the one that tried to, to help them achieve whatever dreams they were wanting to reach out for. Um, I guess one of my only faults is that I gave my children everything that I didn't have in the hopes that they would appreciate it, because I know how much I would have appreciated it when I was their age. Um, I would tell you as parents out there, Entitling your children is probably one of the worst things you can do, and I know I am guilty of that. Um, for whatever reasons, I am guilty of that. Um, tough love is a tough thing as a parent to try to institute to your children because you want to help them as much as you can, and I did as much as I possibly could. When I stopped doing that for them, BJ was 25 and Nico was 22. And it wasn't like I completely cut them off at that point. That, that happened much later. But I've been there. Um, when I put them out of my house, I gave them an apartment for two years. And I said, guys, this is it. This is the time to grow up. I'm giving you two years. I'm gonna pay for everything for two years, but you're gonna have to work or do something because at the end of those two years, that's gonna be it. It's time to be men here, guys. It's time to grow up. At the end of those two years, they hadn't done any of it. Um, it was just right around the time that Leilani and I had gotten together. Leilani was working at Children's Hospital. And let's be clear, Leilani, has been one of the only people who's been an advocate to keeping us together, to keeping us having a relationship because she wants to have the nuclear family as much as I did. And they have spit in her face at every turn. She got them jobs at the hospital, $18 an hour with benefits and with the option of the hospital actually paying for them to go back to school. They said, and I quote, that they knew they didn't, they didn't want to stop to pass a drug test and the day I had the doctors looking into it, Nico's on there, you know, taking a big puff, of which is fine. If you want to smoke, that's fine. I'm not saying that I'm saying that that's bad. If that's your choice, that's your choice. But what I'm telling you is that we have been advocates for them every step of the way. Now let's go to the part where we have been estranged. Again, we talk about abandonment. We're not, yes, I'm not abandoning them. We are estranged, which happens more often than not in this particular situation. BJ broke into our home a few months ago and he put X's on the eyes of our wedding photos. And then he put a photo of my first wedding on Leilani's vanity. It was at that moment. And after I heard him say, and was pointed to from other friends of mine that saw his posts on social media, that he, 
he basically said that I was better off dead to him than alive. I was more valuable to him dead than alive. And that was the end of me dealing with him. If you'll see that not my last video, but the video before that, 42, the song was written by Brian and I, and it was directed, the video, by Nico. And I went on and I said how proud I was of Nico at the time, and I really, really was. He did an awesome job in that video. Um, even before that, two, less than two years ago, these other two gentlemen who stood up for me as my best men in my wedding. So abandonment, deadbeat dad, I, like, I'll reiterate, I've never missed a day of child support. I've been there every step of the way. BJ, he, he talks about Jack's new car. Jack, BJ had three brand new cars before he was 22. But I'm not talking about material things. because None of this has anything to do with money. It's about respect. Respect goes both ways. And even in family, there's a line that shouldn't and should not ever be crossed. Uh, it, it's crazy to me that people will just believe anything and I thought it was important to set the record straight and let you guys know that abandonment has nothing to do with any of this. Deadbeat dad, I've been there every step of the way. And let's also remember that these kids are 30 and 27, not 12. It's time for grown men to be grown men. And I'm sorry that tough love happens to, to be this way. Um, and it's, I do wish them the best. I want them to have and to reach their dreams and their full potential. But like any other man in the world, you, you got to go out there and you got to take it. Um, as far as my daughter is concerned, um, you know, her mother, if you look back at my Instagram, she was a part of this family too, with Jack and Julie and Leilani and myself. And unfortunately, along the way, a couple of years ago, I got wind that there was an older cousin who was above 18, who was quite possibly having sex with her. So I called, as a father should, to the, the state office for, for children's affairs there in Arizona, and I had never heard anything back, but the next thing that, her, thing that her mother did was to block all of us from her social media, from her phone, and completely estrange her from us. So what that told me was they didn't want me to be involved in her life that way. So to see the post that she said, considering that her mother only had a child with me for money in the first place, and I'll reiterate this, I have not missed a child support payment. She goes to one of the most incredible private schools in Arizona. Um, so I don't know where this is all coming from, but I thought that I needed to let everybody know that there's another side to this story. Um, you can choose to believe what you want. Uh, I, I thought that I would lay it out there for you. Anything that I say is actual and factual. All you have to do is Google Brian McKnight and Sons and you'll see us singing all over YouTube. Um, go back and look at my Instagram. Go back a couple of years. You'll see that I've posted about all of my children. Um, but remember that these kids, these boys, are they're grown men and tough love is exactly what it is. It's tough love. So. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening. And I hope that that gives you a little bit more perspective. All right. So you guys just heard what Brian McKnight had to say. So this entire situation is definitely really sad. But I do feel like it came about because of the post that Brian McKnight posted about his son. There was, you know, subtle shade in there now that more of the story is out. But I see a lot of wrong on all parts. Okay. First, with the kids taking to social media and going off, you know, family business is not social media's business. But being that they decide to make it social media's business, Brian McKnight had every right to defend himself and say what he felt from his side of the perspective. Now, first of all, his sons are grown, okay? These boys are 27 and 30 years old, and Brian McKnight is not lying. If you go back onto YouTube, if you go back onto social media, they were torn with Brian McKnight. They were harmonizing with him. They were doing all types of stuff with Brian McKnight not too long ago. So if he's such a horrible father and you guys have been abandoned for years, well, what the hell was this shit that was going on? Not even two, three years ago, you know, and I understand that just cutting a check does not make you a father. Paying child support doesn't necessarily make you a father. You also need to be there. But this is where I also want to hold women accountable because I see nobody talking about this. Okay. Brian McKnight basically said that Bree's mother got pregnant by him on purpose. 
Again, this is the mentality a lot of chicks in this generation have where they get with a celebrity, an athlete, and they're just worrying about getting a check. I'm about to just get a bag. I'm going to be set off of child support, not realizing they're going to cause more damage to their children. And here's why. OK, the reason why he doesn't have as much attachment to that daughter is because one, she wasn't planned. It wasn't somebody he was trying to be with. It was somebody who got pregnant. And I'm sure the mother got pregnant because he's Brian McKnight. Just like a lot of these women are out here doing with these athletes and these rappers. And then who ends up suffering? The children. Because the man has no attachment to that woman, it's hard for him to have an attachment to that child. Does it make it right? No, but let's not act like this shit is not what's going on in the real world 24-7 with, with side chicks getting pregnant. And then the baby's just basically left to the wayside. The father wants to have nothing to do with the child because the child reminds them of the mother that they weren't planning on being with. They just wanted to bust a quick nut. So I think that's one discussion that we need to have women out here trying to get pregnant, you know, what I'm saying, but not trying to build a foundation with the father. And that's what happens is that you have a lot of children who feel abandoned. And the father's like, you know, I have to pay this child support check because I'm being taken to court. You know, it's my financial obligation, but they don't want anything to do with the children because if he was really attached to that daughter. When he stated that there was a rumor going around that his daughter was sleeping with their 18-year-old cousin and she was a minor at the time, a father who's really attached to their daughter is not just going to call CPS and then leave it at that once the mother changes the numbers. When you're really attached to that child and you're fighting for that child's well-being, you're going to go to court and go and try and fight for custody of that child because you want your child in a safer environment than what the mother is providing. So that right there makes me give Brian McKnight the side eye that he didn't fight a little bit harder if that girl was going through some type of sexual abuse situation. Don't just let the mother dictate the situation because you two are the father of that child, like it or not. But that's why I say as adults, we have to take personal responsibility instead of being out here just sport fucking and having babies by people willy nilly for a bag and for a check. See, that's the conversation folks don't want to have, but we're going to have that conversation on this good Sunday, okay? Because y'all know I'm going to always keep it real. So that was one situation that just that's just sad that I had to point out. Like I said, his sons are grown. I mean, at this point, it seems like he's done what he could for those boys, and they haven't taken advantage of that. And that's one thing I noticed with some celebrity children. You have some, they want to go the route of their parents. They want to be entertainers and singers and dancers. And a lot of times, society may not be checking for them like that because it's like, okay, we know who your father is. Just because your father was talented doesn't necessarily mean that it's trickled down to you. So a lot of times, they have to fight 10 times as harder. Then you have other celebrity children who take advantage of that. Because they've literally been born into this lifestyle with a silver spoon in their mouth. And they feel like they shouldn't have to do anything. They should live off of your money. They should be good. You should just take care of them because you're their child. At some point in time, you have to get up and get it yourself. We're talking about two grown men. Why does your father have to pay your rent for two years? I've been on my own since I was 18, paying my own rent. Nobody paid my rent for me. You know, so where could I sign up for this lifestyle? Where somebody just pays your rent for two years to give you a chance to get on your feet. Sign me the fuck up! <laughs> good shit! Good shit! That's some good shit right there, right there! If I do say so myself, I say so! That's what I'm talking about right there! Right there! Right there! You know, so the self-entitlement of, you know, of some of the children is just really sad. But, at the end of the day, I think, you know, there's a lot of dysfunction in this family. And they put all this on blast. I hope at the end of the day, they either go to counseling, they talk about it. It should have been kept private, but I hope that now it's public. They deal with this on a professional level. They go and get counseling because what I see is a lot of hurt. Because at the end of the day, there's three sides to every story. His, hers, and the truth. And I think in this case, you have different people with different perspectives. You have Brian McKnight sitting there with one perspective. You have his two boys sitting there with a perspective. You have the stepson, you know, with his own perspective. You have the mother, the stepmother. You have Bree. So you have all these different people who are seeing things from their own perspective, and they're not willing to look at it from the other person's side. So that's why I feel like counseling is going to need to come in and, you know, try and start the healing process. Maybe they need to go visit Yana Fix My Life or something. Not on my watch. Not 
on my watch. But the whole situation is sad, and it's really sad that, you know, um, these kids accuse him of abandoning them, and I don't think he necessarily abandoned them, especially the boys. I think the boys got complacent and comfortable, and they're kind of, you know, being ungrateful at this point, and he's kind of washed his hands of them. His daughter's a little bit younger, and I think the situation with his daughter goes a lot deeper than just abandonment. I think there was just never a connection because of how she was conceived, and that's one thing we don't like to talk about, but I think that's where their issue lies, and they're definitely going to need counseling for that because regardless of how she was conceived, regardless if the mom was a gold digger, she set him up, that's still your flesh and blood. That's still your child, and she doesn't deserve that. So that's why as grown women, we need to think twice when, we, when we're so worried about chasing the bag, how is this going to affect our child 16, 17, 18 years later? And Bree's a perfect example of that. And I hope that Brian McKnight wakes up and he reaches out to his daughter and he, you know, shows his daughter love because right now she's crying for a father. And I don't want it to be a situation where this girl feels like she has nobody besides her brothers and she just goes, you know, continues to spiral down the wrong path. Especially being that she says she's dealing with a lot of demons, which could be drugs and sex and alcohol and just all types of stuff. So hopefully he, he goes and he reaches out to his daughter because she's still a minor child. I believe she's 17, maybe 18 right now, you know, and he tries to make it right. The other ones, y'all are grown. Get your shit together. And stop taking the social media and y'all's damn feelings when you're damn near 30. I believe a lot of what he's saying about the older ones. Because like I said, there's all types of video evidence. Everybody was cool not even a year or two ago. Now they're saying he abandoned you and he don't fuck with y'all and y'all haven't seen him. Well, there might be a reason for that. So I'm not buying everything the older boys are saying. But like I said, with the little girl, there's definitely a lot of dysfunction and animosity in that relationship. That Brian as an adult needs to take the first step and start the healing process. So anyways, that's my opinion on this entire situation concerning the McKnights. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All right, deuces.